So we have now 10 responders on scene coming in from all the wrong directions to the tunnels. Everything against protocol. You don't know even where is the escape doors that connected the two tunnels. You can hear his, his, his adrenaline rush. You can hear uh, he's trying to remember uh, protocol. Okay, what, what, what's the important parts? What do I need to report over to dispatch in order to get the best picture of what's going on? Hi everyone, I'm Dovia Maizel, Vice President of Operations at United Atzala, Israel's largest volunteer emergency medical service. And I'm Elad Bachar, the Medical Director of United Atzala. How you doing, Elad? Great, I think. Great. We're nine months at war. You've not slept one night. Okay, you got me. <laughs> not so good, but... Well, under the circumstances, we're here, we're, we're here to talk about emergencies. So, so it really, you know, it resonates with what we're doing. And, and, and how we're uh, dealing with this. And, and I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of this in, in future episodes as well. It fits this period. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about a little bit about this episode today. And that, that will be, you know, looking at two mass casualty incidents of two bus accidents um, with uh, multiple patients and injuries um, and different challenges. The first MCI that we'll be talking about is a bus accident that took place in a uh, highway tunnel in Haifa in the Carmel Tunnels, uh, which is literally beneath Haifa and the Carmel Mountain. And the second one is a serious bus accident and a truck that took place on Route 1 between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv on the 402 bus uh, that hit a truck that was uh, parked on the shoulder. Okay, so let's jump in. And that's exactly what we'll do. So let's start. We're, we're traveling back in time to 2016, April 21st. A very serious bus accident that happened in the Carmel Tunnels in Haifa when an Eged bus line 101 crashed into a wall of the tunnel, leaving a 20-year-old female dead and 48 passengers wounded, six of them, very seriously. Initially, when the call came in, the call was of a, uh, a truck that hit a bus in, in the tunnel. The bus twisted, veered, and crashed into the side of the tunnel and one of the volunteers, the first responders that arrived on scene, um, initially called over through communications that it's a mass casualty incident with dozens of people injured on scene um, and any resources that are available. Basically, you know, pr pronouncing that, 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 uh, that, that it's an MCI and activate the MCI protocol. This tunnel, of course, uh, is two lines Two lines, a uh, tunnel with wall and bridges, but it's separate. We need to understand that it's separate two tunnels. That uh, north and south, yeah, north, north and south. The tunnels are, are a few kilometers long or a few miles long, for those of us who aren't in the metric system. And of course, when you are uh, doing a new stuff, road, tunnel, everything, you need to prepare. You need to do uh, drills or exercise and. Uh, I want to understand, or oh, I know that we wasn't uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Participate, participate in this kind so, of drill so, so maybe before we'll, the So maybe we'll even take it back one notch and, and, and talk about MCIs in general. And, and I'm sure that in future episodes, we know we have a plan that's talking about the uh, MCI drills and exercises and whatnot. Is because, you know, if we want, uh, practice makes perfect. You know, they, they asked once uh, someone uh, on the street in New York, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? So the guy tells him, practice, practice, practice. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, and here, no different. The more we practice MCIs, the better we are at it. And when, like you were saying, when a new highway opens up, when a new tunnel opens up, a bridge, obviously all emergency services are supposed to conduct a, a mass casualty. So what happens when there is a disaster in this unique spot? Because obviously access is limited, um, bringing resources in is limited. We have hazards that don't exist in an open space area, uh, uh, like on a regular highway. And we'll talk about that in, in, in further on into the episode about the 402 bus, which was on a regular highway. You don't know even where is the escape doors that connected the two tunnels. So you don't know where you should put your ambulance and go into the other, other side tunnel. Yeah, that's so, interesting. It's also important to know where to bring the ambulance to, because clearly... If the tunnel is shut down because 
The bus turned over, crashed into the wall, and flipped on the side, blocking access. Where do we access the tunnel from? How do we get there? So what was the problem with, with, no, with, with, no, with no drilling before, and then the accident occurred? So what essentially what happened here, well, a lot went wrong. A lot went wrong is that, you know, being an uh, a, a emergency response organization, we, we constantly train our volunteers for mass casualty incidents. Protocols, you know, staging, incident command, triage system, and, and all, all of those things. And obviously, when, when we're looking at, at pre-planning incidents, places like this, we can predict what's going to happen. You don't need to be a rocket scientist in order to understand that it's only a matter of time until something will happen in these tunnels. Till the first car accident will happen. Exactly. And even looking at the history of the world, of, you know, we've seen accidents in tunnels. And we've seen the complication how, and, and the challenges of responding to these. And here, there was a mass casualty incident, except not all of the emergency services took part. It, it felt more like, you know, um, just making a V in the checkbox. As, okay, we did, the, we did the exercise. But essentially what happened was, when our first responder arrived on scene literally 90 seconds after the incident happened because he happened to be on the road and he was with a motorcycle. So he wasn't limited with the ability to get in. He was on the road when the incident happened. It took him about 90 seconds to arrive on scene and call back to dispatch saying that this is a mass casualty incident in the tunnel. So first responders start responding from all over. Ambulance are deployed, fire department, um, you know, uh, fire department for extrication, and whatnot, everybody's deploying to the scene. And of course, who are the first responders to arrive and start doing triage? Our man with the motorcycle. Exactly, why? Because he is the fastest and traffic jams. Doing exactly. So we have now 10 responders on scene coming in from all the wrong directions to the tunnels. Everything against protocol, literally block, positioning their vehicles in the wrong places, which actually in retrospective, when, when you know debriefing the incident, they actually congested the, the evacuation routes because they didn't know where to stand. Now, had they done the exercise what a mess. prior to this, then, yeah. I mean, we know to say that we're wrong, right? It's, it's no shame. It's all a learning process. Um, but but no, no, no one learned us what should we do. No. Remember, remember from the previous episode we were talking about Murphy? So how long after these tunnels opened did this accident occur? A few weeks. One week. One week after the tunnels opened, and who made the biggest mess of the scene there? Our people. Our volunteers. Not because they're unprofessional. They treated the patients as best as possible. But when looking at the objective challenges of the tunnel, that the routes are changed. You have now ambulances coming in from the exits. You, you've got all, all, all sorts of different issues there. Hazards, which I'm sure you'll talk about in a minute, and risks in the tunnel. We did everything wrong when it came to that. And police on the scene, police officers in Israel, by the way, scene command, incident command um, is, is done by, by police. Uh, they're the highest authority, whereas in the U.S., for example, fire department is or, or whatnot. Here it's police. So the police commander on scene immediately starts going crazy and, and, and shouting at the volunteers, which are busy saving lives of people that are injured there. And... Then we're called to a uh, debrief afterwards, post-mortem. Post <laughs> Maybe not the best word choice, but, uh, but, but post-incident uh, debrief. And, and the police are there bashing our heads why we messed up the whole scene and evacuation process. And our simple answer was, we weren't invited to the exercise, to the drill. So how do you expect us to know? And, and, and that, I think, goes a long way, especially when understanding um, the system here, is that having a mass power of an emergency medical service that has over 7,000 paramedics, doctors, and EMTs with over 2,000 vehicles, you have to incorporate them in the, in the planning. And, and moving forward into the future, this took a major, a major shift in understanding that, that the first responders coming from the community are the game changer, and they have to be incorporated in these exercises. And the question that uh, we should ask is that if after this incident someone call us to drill after opening a new tunnel or a new road? Well, it's, it's a constant work in progress of, you know, uh, 
uh, the volunteer organizations versus the legacy government organizations. Um, and, and I guess we'll never solve that uh, 100%, but definitely we've come a long way uh, when it comes to that. But, so, but, but let's start let's start talking a little bit uh, a lot why don't, why don't you share a little bit about you know talking about triage uh, on such a uh, uh, challenging scene triage of the patients priorities so I think first of all we should understand that tunnel as a close closed area very very problematic stuff exploding in this kind of uh, area of course it's a very very big problem for the the casualties and for the staff that come to help them so fire hazards of course fire hazards and <laughs> a lot of stuff that can happen in a tunnel then I don't know the, the other vehicles that come into the tunnel don't know that there is an accident and uh, of course the triage in this kind of incident is very 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 advantage no no uh, challenging challenging, <laughs> challenging. so a lot by the end of this podcast you'll be a fluent English speaker I promise you I can only apologize for my English <laughs> and, and my Israeli accent it's okay it's, it's okay. okay I always say that English is is, is my uh, you know everyone says I sound American so I can I can I can put on the Israeli accent if I want but <laughs> I always say that English is my mother's tongue not my mother tongue I'm a board bred Israeli <laughs> so I If you're going back to the <laughs> challenges of this area of this incident so it's challenge because the trios the trios should be in a tunnel but the tunnel is blocks with the bus and with our ambulances and the other ambulances fire trucks and everything so you can come only from one direction to the triage point and of course you can transport the casualties to the hospitals only from one direction and I think that in this incident, the trauma center that should be at the yeah, road, trauma, trauma level one uh, hospital, Rambam Hospital in Haifa. So this hospital, the trauma level one, was blocked because of the incident. So most of the people, most of the casualties, should evacuate to another hospital. Part of them... transport to the Rambo hospital but it was a very long way well let, let's the explain to the, to the to the audience uh, that that these tunnels essentially uh, Haifa is a city of about a, almost, almost a million people population it's on a mountain which is a massive Carmel mountain um, and these tunnels cross the city from the, the northern side. part to the southern part so anyone who doesn't want to get through traffic of the city now essentially the only evacuation route from here was the It was literally taking the patients away from the trauma level a hospital so we came to help the injuries but when we uh, blocked the tunnel and the way to the trauma one center hospital we just make them worse yeah to, to a certain extent but but that, that, was, that was a lot that we afterwards in the, in the debriefs and, and, and trying to learn from this incident and Um, first of all it, it helped us understand and prioritizing the transport um, obviously in a scene in a scene like this we're talking about 45 people that were injured so we're not talking about hundreds like we spoke about in the Versailles Hall or other incidents that we're talking about and we're talking about six critically injured so obviously we need to prioritize so, you know those are being extricated take their time of being extricated but at the meantime we want to make sure that the that the um, red tags are being are being transported first yeah when, when you think about it, 45 people that injury in a tunnel it's not like 45 injury in an open space it's like okay you found the six critical injuries but how you get to the ambulances there is a very very big traffic jams of ambulances fire trucks everything well, essentially had, had they ex- had the exercises or, or drilled this right uh, the ambulances would have known at the beginning to come from the opposite direction which is what ultimately what happened afterwards it took more it, it took longer to But, uh, but ultimately the ambulances did reroute and come around from the opposite direction um, and come getting to the scene needing to make a u-turn in a two-lane tunnel 
in order to, to evacuate the patients back out because it was way too long, not like in Versailles that we were talking about, you know, okay, you walk half a block down with a stretcher. Here, we're talking about a hike. So it, and, and, and miles of tunnel. Yeah, and mile, uh, yeah exactly. So, so that was one of the challenges. It, it took time. So at least we know that uh, prioritizing the transport was really identifying the red tags, trying to stabilize them, you know, uh, whether it was a uh, airway and 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 uh, chest injuries and and, uh, and multi trauma patients is to prioritize identify them bring them out to the um to the triage spot and and, and staging area where the ambulances were were eventually able to make it into there and and be transported out the transport of the other patients took long it took long simply because of the objective challenge of of access access i don't want to think what will happen if car accident like this with, I don't know, 50 critical injury? Well, you know, when we look at the world, we've seen, uh, we've seen uh, accidents like these in, in, in tunnels in Europe and in other places where... A, a, people a, burned alive. A, exactly. A lot of people, hundreds of vehicles as well, because the fumes and the heat within the tunnels, the temperatures there rise instantly, very fast, because there's always that dilemma of do we activate the vents in order to uh, uh, get the smoke out. But what happens when we activate the vents, we're sucking more oxygen, oxygen in. in. So, so it really is, I mean, I, when we talk about accidents and, 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 and hazards and dangers in situations like this, tunnels are the worst. So in the tunnels today, they build them with uh, special sealed rooms from temperatures so that people can evacuate to these, uh, to these uh, special rooms and, 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 and save themselves. But I, I think that the risk there of uh, of combustion and 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 you know fire starting thankfully and did toxins. not happen and toxins of course did not happen but um, but 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 definitely gave it us a lot of food worse. for food for thought for the future and and I think maybe we'll segue from from this you know looking at the most difficult uh, situation and and hazards maybe we'll shift over a little bit to talking about the the 402 bus uh, which was uh, on on the highway this the was highway. a uh, a bus that uh, left uh, Jerusalem towards central Israel and uh, had on board about 50 passengers, just uh, about 20 miles out of Jerusalem, going by a major interchange. There was a, a big truck standing on the shoulder of the road, and the bus driver was not, he was not very focused on his driving, and he hit the, bu the truck on the shoulder of the road, uh, killing three children and injuring uh, 12 people of them, uh, many of them critically. So let's talk a little bit about what a, a typical, uh, you know, in, in other places we call it a mass casualty incident. Here, unfortunately, uh, we activate the mass casualty incident protocol because the potential of, a, of, an, of an accident like this could be 50 people injured at least and, 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 and others as well. So for us, we, we related to it as an MCI incident. Aftermath, we're talking about, like I said, 12 people injured and, and, and three children that unfortunately were killed. But let's talk a little bit about triage and transport and also what it looks like on a timeline in an incident like this. So at first I think about the triage. So maybe the first ambulance or the second ambulance that will enter this scene, they, they will make the triage. But a lot of ambulances came to this scene very, very fast. So after the first triage, I think that after not a long minutes, most of the casualty, the critical, of course, was was uh, at at the, at the way to the hospitals. But we're talking about minutes, minutes within within minutes, minutes. Because if you're thinking about it, it's the the main road of this country, so a lot of ambulances are surrounding it. Of course, the, the first ambulance I don't know came after ten minutes or something like this because it's 20, 20 kilometers from Jerusalem, but the interesting thing and the difference between the two incidents is one incident that we always drill and make exercise for it. Yeah, it, it's, that, it's the one we exercise most. And then we know what should we do and we know where is the treating point and what triage we should do and which critical patient will go first. And the other that we didn't drill, we didn't make an exercise, we was part of the problem that worsened the incident. 
Yeah. So I, I would say if we talk about Murphy, here Murphy wasn't there. This is textbook. Not for the casualties. but Well, yeah. obviously, obviously. Um, it's very unfortunate, you know. We also talk about the volunteers there, and, and you can. And when we when we debrief the the incidents, um, and we listen to the radio uh, communications, we listen to the phone calls, um, and, and and we we hear the um, the reports coming in from the volunteers. Now, now, mind you, on on this incident, we had literally within a minute, a minute after the accident, um, a volunteer of ours, Yechiel Miller, um, happened to be on the highway. He literally saw the accident happen, and, and he, he, he pulled over to the shoulder and ran over and, and, and reported in, you know, the first report you can hear. You can hear his, his, his adrenaline rush. You can hear, uh, he's trying to remember uh, protocol. Okay, what, what, what's the important parts? What do I need to report over to dispatch in order to get the best picture of what's going on? Um, and, and you can hear him reporting about the unconscious girls, and, and, uh, and, and it's, it's heartbreaking. It's very, very interesting that you're talking about Again, about a volunteer and paramedic that was on the road and got there at 90 seconds. I know that our future episodes touch this stuff, but, but it's very interesting because at our tunnel bus incident, it was also 90 seconds that one of our volunteer EMT so was there. I don't know if it's Murphy that our people all the time there, but... It's not Murphy. It's called Power of Community understanding that, well, what United Atsala is, is, is basically an organization which is community-based and power of community. It's leveraging um, the power of community to crowdsource life-saving, literally. And, and the idea is having volunteers all over, everywhere. We call it the random volunteer. It, it's playing with statistics. It, it literally is, 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 is taking statistics and leveraging them in order to have people everywhere all the time, because we understand, and I always talk about this, is that it's not ambulances that save lives. It's people. people. Get enough people spread out in the community, equipped with everything they need, everything that's in an ambulance, in their motorcycle, in their private car, on their e-bike, or whatever it is, and we'll get to that 90 seconds. And, and it's not coincidental. It's not coincidental. It's an 18-year mission that we've been on. And, and, and we can see this every single day. So I, I think that, that I mean, when, when we're looking at a mass casualty incident, um, there are the ones that are textbook. Sorry to pull it back down to, to the ground, but, you know, 35 years in the field. Um, no MCI read the textbook. That's right. But there are those that came close. They were listening in the back of the class a little bit. And <laughs> a patient with a heart attack never be like another patient with a heart attack. Okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I won't argue you. I won't argue you. You're my boss. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so but, but yeah, but there are those that are easier than others, okay? Right. Um, and, and the important thing is to always remember to take the, the textbook and, and adapt it to the, to the patient and not vice versa. And, 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 and two cases that we're talking about here, one poses many different challenges on so many levels. From preparation to preparedness to training to execution and, and to, to lessons learned after um, to those that are more are easier, okay? Call it easier, not textbook. So you've got the incident. It's not evolving. It's not developing. Um, you've got your resources nearby. Um, they're available. They're there immediately. You're able to do proper triage. You're not limited with your transport component. And you're able to do a chop, 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 chop. And then you know that within 15, 20 minutes, the incident is done. The incident is over. And, and, the, and then you just got to deal with those adrenaline levels in order to, 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 to lower them. But You're right. And if I'm taking it back to the textbook, so I think that maybe we should talk about, we should talk about the textbook and the triage tags because... I don't know. Everybody think, knows them. The star triage tags, you know? Yeah, the star triage tags, but... Red, are, yellow, green. Are we using it? I, I, I find that in 40 years, nothing has changed in, uh, in the world of, of tagging, and nobody really... Well, you know what? Categorically, I'll say that there are countries that do because they always stick to the textbook, and it's very difficult for them when the incident didn't read the textbook. And there are those that are more agile, and 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 and, and more and, Israeli. 
<laughs> Some may say we do have a problem uh, working by the rules. I know that. Yeah. But uh, but it, prove, it, it proves itself well in, in, e, in EMS. So Oh, and of course, <laughs> uh, I, I want to take us to the ground. We are using the triage. Tags. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, we just we don't like that. We are using the stickers, but we understand that there is a problem with it. We just don't like them. Yeah, and I think that we are 2024. I don't know if this is the right way with the own technology ever we'll surrounding us. That. We'll talk about that in the future. So uh, if we want to take, I don't know, a take-home message, one take-home message from this uh, episode and two, these two incidents that has a lot uh, in common, but very, very different ones. So I think that uh, we understand that the drill, 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 this is the, this is the, the stuff drill that will make Drill and exercise and prepare. prepare. Remember Carnegie Hall that I was talking about? Practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. And once again, a- agility, agility. Don't be stuck within the box. Agility brings us to, per- to perfection. Agility is part of the MCI protocol. <laughs> well... Elad, that brings us to the end of another episode of Masters of Emergency. We hope you enjoyed this episode and, uh, and, 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 and appreciate the, the braveness and the, the, the efforts of volunteers and first responders um, uh, on the scene. If you found this episode interesting, make sure to share it um, uh, on the different platforms with your friends, with your family. On the uh, next episode, uh, Masters of Emergency. We'll be talking and, and, and taking a closer look of an uh, interesting, once again, incident that, uh, that took place in a major synagogue with thousands of people praying in it, uh, that the bleachers in them collapsed, uh, sending hundreds of people falling down. Um, you don't want to miss that episode. You don't want to miss that episode. So until then, stay safe. Um, and in an emergency... Just remember, we were talking about the takeaways. Knowledge, experience, practice is the difference between life and death. 